Minister yesterday for expressing legitimate concerns about immigration led to a very good question tonight, which was, is there a disconnect between our politicians and ordinary people on the question of uncontrolled mass immigration? And they all felt that they all looked uncomfortable with this, but we got an admission from Nick Clegg that as members of the European Union, there is absolutely nothing we can do about uncontrolled numbers coming into this country from the rest of the European Union. This is something that we've been saying for years. UKIP was the only party that voted against this in the European Parliament back in 2004. And now the cat's out of the bag. And now we have one week until polling day. And I think the British public will realise that we cannot have our own immigration and asylum policy and be members of the European Union. Therefore, we have to make a big decision. And specifically, what would that decision be for your party? Well, what we would say is, look, let's have a free trade agreement with the European Union. Let's have work permits from you know, workers from Poland or Lithuania or whatever it may be. But let's not give to hundreds of millions of people from very poor countries the automatic right of settlement and entitlement to our social security system. We've got rising unemployment in Britain and to have an excess of supply, oversupply in the labour market at this time is bad for our people and out there in the country this is what tens of millions of people are talking about and somehow the Westminster Club have tried to ignore it. I don't think in future they're going to be able to. Just a brief comment, if I may, Mr Farage, on the question of city bonuses. Again, that featured prominently in the debate. Yes, I mean, bashing bankers is a very popular activity. Um, there's no admission from the politicians that, in fact, it was they that created such bad rules in the first place. Um, look, of course we want to get taxpayers' money back from the banks that have been propped up, but if we excessively tax bonuses in the City of London, we will send our wealth creators offshore, they'll be off to Zurich, they'll be off to New York, and it will be a terrible, terrible mistake for what is, after all, Britain's biggest industry. Mr Farage? I'm afraid I'm going to have to stop you. Thank you very much for joining us, Nigel Farage, there at uh, Westminster. Now, of course, uh, what really counts is the impact of the debate on the millions of voters who have been watching tonight, and many of them, before the debate started, were still said to be undecided if the polls are to be believed. For an early sense of the public response, Rita Chakrabarti is with a specially selected group here in Birmingham to see what they made of the exchanges. Rita. Hugh, thank you. Well, I'm once again with a group of floating voters, and I spent the evening watching the debate with them. And they've been voting on what they thought were the ups and downs, the highs and lows of the debate, and their reactions were translated into a graphic on-screen worm. So a red line, of course, for Gordon Brown, a blue one for David Cameron, and a yellow one for Nick Clegg. Well, to discuss the findings of uh, the ups and downs of the worm, I'm joined now by Ben Page from Ipsos Mori, the polling group. Good evening and welcome, Ben. Well, our first clip is from Gordon Brown's opening speech and this is when he was referring